Hello students, today we are going to do the second chapter from the textbook Snapshots of Class 11 titled The Address by Margot Minko. This story, it is about the human predicament that follows the pre-war and post-war period. Mrs. S, who was a Jew, was a rich lady, whereas Mrs. Dorling was a non-Jew. The girl, daughter of Mrs. S, had lost her house and her mother during the war and now she had decided to come back to take her possessions from Mrs. Dorling, an acquaintance whose address was given by her mother years ago. When she reached the house, the woman treated her with a cold reception and didn't let her into the house. She decided to go back anyway and then she met her daughter who let her in and told her to wait inside. When she saw all the possessions in front of her, she couldn't connect with them and decided to leave the house. Now let us read the chapter. This short story is a poignant. Poignant means sentimental, sad, painful account of a daughter who goes in search of her mother's belongings after the war in Holland. When she finds them, the objects evoke. Evoke means arouse memories of her earlier life. However, she decides to leave them all behind and resolves to move on. Resolves me decides to move on. Do you still know me? I asked. The woman looked at me searchingly. Searchingly means thoroughly. She had opened the door a chink. Chink means narrow opening. I came closer and stood on the step. No, I don't know you. I am Mrs. S's daughter. The protagonist asked the woman standing at the door if she still knew her. The lady had opened the door a little. The protagonist came closer to the door and stood there. The woman responded negatively and protagonist still gave her introduction saying that I am Mrs. S daughter. She held her hand on the door as though she wanted to prevent it opening any further. Her face gave absolutely no sign of recognition. She kept staring at me in silence. Perhaps I was mistaken. I thought perhaps it isn't her. I had seen her only once fleetingly, means for a short time, and that was years ago. It was most probable that I had rung the wrong bell. The woman let go of the door and stepped to the side. She was wearing my mother's green knitted cardigan. The wooden buttons were rather pale from washing. She saw that I was looking at the cardigan and half hid herself again behind the door. But I knew now that I was right. So our protagonist, she gave her introduction, but woman responded negatively. When she, and she also told her that she is Mrs. S. daughter. Woman, she held the door tightly as she didn't want her to enter the house and kept staring at the protagonist, though she couldn't rec recognize her. She was pretending that she didn't recognize her. The girl thought maybe she had come to the wrong house. She had seen the woman only for a short time years ago. The woman who answered the door stepped aside and let go of the door. The protagonist, the girl, she recognized her mother's green knitted cardigan that the woman was wearing. The wooden buttons had become pale because of the washing. The woman also noticed the girl looking at the cardigan. So she hid behind the door and now the girl knew that she had come to the right house. Well, you knew my mother, I asked. Have you come back? said the woman. I thought that no one had come back. Only me. The girl, she asked the woman about her mother. Woman asked her if she had come back. She replied only to her and no one else came with her. The door opened and closed in the passage behind her. A musty smell emerged. Musty means stale. 
so a stain a smell of dampness it came out i regret i cannot do anything for you so when woman she opened the door and the passage was behind her a musty smell a damp spell it came out woman told her that she could not do anything for her i have come here specially on the train i wanted to talk to you for a moment it is not convenient for me now said the woman i can't see you another time she nodded and cautiously closed the door as though no one inside the house should be disturbed so here once again uh, this girl she told her that she had come from far place on the train just to talk to her but the woman told her it is not convenient to talk right now and asked her to come back later she closed the door as she didn't want anyone to get disturbed in the house i stood where i was on the step the curtain in front of bay window moved someone stared at me and would then have asked what i wanted oh nothing the woman would have said i was it was nothing so when woman she closed the door in the way that she didn't want to uh, didn't want anyone to get disturbed in the house the girl was still standing on the step she saw a curtain moving on the window bay because and found someone was staring at her from inside the house she thought that it was nothing as the woman would have told her when that person asked her who was on the door i looked at the name plate again darling it said in black letters on white enamel and on the jam a bit higher the number number 46 the girl she, uh, protagonist she looked at the number plate again and it said number 46 and darling was written on the plate on white enamel as i walked slowly back to the station i thought about my mother who had given me the address years ago it had been in the first half of the war so uh, war was world war was going on and it was during the first half of the war that uh, mother of the protagonist she gave address to her daughter i was home for a few days and it struck me immediately that something or other about the rooms had changed i missed various things my mother was surprised i should have noticed so quickly then she told me about mrs darling i had never heard of her but apparently she was an old acquaintance of my mother whom she hadn't seen for years she had suddenly turned up and renewed their contact since then she had come regularly so when the girl, when girl she saw the name plate and the number on the plate she was confirmed and as she was going back to the station she was thinking about her mother who gave her the address it was the first half of the war she was home for a few days and suddenly it struck her that the room was different now various things were missing her mother was surprised that she noticed the changes a little later it was that time when she told her about this woman mrs dorling she was an old contact of hers whom she hadn't seen for years suddenly she came to visit her and since then they had been in regular contact every time she leaves here she takes something home with her said my mother she took all the table silver in one go all the table silver in one go means in one uh try she took all the things and then the antique antique means old plates that hung there she had trouble lugging lugging means carrying heavy objects those large vases and i am worried she got a crick crick means 
a cramp or spasm in muscles in her back from the crockery. My mother shook her head pityingly. Pityingly means feeling sad or sorrow. I would never have dared to ask her. She suggested it to me herself. She even insisted. She wanted to save all my nice things. If we have to leave here, we shall lose everything she says. So here her mother, she told her that whenever that woman, she came to visit her, she took something from the house with her, table silvers, antique plates, and she had trouble over carrying the large vase. She told her that the cramp in her back came from the crockery. Her mother shook her head in sorrow. The woman kept telling the protagonist's mother that she wanted to save her precious things. If they had to leave the place someday, they would lose everything. Then uh, protagonist, she asked her mother if she really wanted to take all the things with her. Her mother replied, as if that's necessary, my mother cried. It would simply be an insult to talk like that and think about the risk she's running. Each time she goes out of our door with a full suitcase of bag. So when girl, she asked her mother if she really wanted her to take all the things with her, her mother replied that even if she didn't, it would be an insult to ask her not to. She was going out with the risk herself, a suitcase full of items. My mother seemed to notice that I was not entirely convinced. She looked at me reprovingly. Reprovingly means in a rebuking manner or in a scolding manner. And after that, we spoke no more about it. So when mother noticed that her daughter wasn't convinced and looked at her critically. And after that day, they never talked about the incident again. Meanwhile, I had arrived at the station without having paid much attention to things on the way. I was walking in familiar places again for the first time since the war, but I did not want to go further than was necessary. I didn't want to upset myself with the sights of streets and houses full of memories from precious time. So, uh, in the meanwhile, the girl, she reached the station without noticing any details on the way. She passed the familiar things after the war for the first time, but she didn't want to upset herself with the familiar sights of houses and streets that reminded her of all the precious time. She, uh, she didn't want to upset herself with old memories of precious time because her mind, it was full of ambiguous thoughts, struggle inside and predicament. In the train back, I saw Mrs. Dorling in front of me again as I had the first time I met her. It was the morning after the day my mother had told me about her. I had got up late and coming downstairs, I saw my mother about to see someone out, a woman with a broad back. So back in the time, she saw Mrs. Dorling in person a day after her mother told her daughter about her. She woke up late that morning and as she was going downstairs, she saw her, the lady with a broad back. There is my daughter, said my mother. She beckoned, beckoned means she signaled to me. The woman nodded and picked up the suitcase under the coat rack. She wore a brown coat and a shapeless hat. Does she live far away? I asked. Seeing the difficulty she had going out of the house with heavy case. In Marconi Street, said my mother, number 46, remember that. So when uh, narrator, she looked at her mother, uh, she looked at that lady, she saw her from the back, she had a broad back, her mother was seeing her out, her mother introduced her daughter to the lady. She beckoned to her and the woman responded with a nod. 
Then she picked the suitcase under the coat rack. She was wearing a brown coat and a shapeless hat. The girl asked her mother if she lived far away. Mother told her the address, Marconi Street, number 46, and she remembered it. I had remembered it, but I had waited a long time to go there. Initially, after the liberation, I was absolutely uh, not interested in all that stored stuff. And naturally, I was also rather afraid of it. So here, uh, this girl, she remembered the address, but she took too long to visit the place. After the liberation, after the freedom, she was on one hand not interested and the, on the other she was afraid. She was afraid of getting confronted with the past memories and connections that no longer existed. So this is what she says that uh, firstly she was absolutely not interested in all that stored stuff and naturally I was also rather afraid of it. She says afraid of being confronted means uh, facing things that had belonged to a connection that no longer existed, which were hidden away in cupboards and boxes and waiting in vain until they were put back in their place again, which had endured, endured means suffered all those years because they were things. So these things, they lasted for years. Why? Because they were simply things. So she was afraid of getting confronted with these past memories and connections that no longer existed. Connections were hidden in cupboards and boxes and it seemed that those memories were waiting in vain. They were waiting uh, in vain to put them back to their places as they had suffered all these years because they were only things. But gradually everything became more normal again bread was getting to be a lighter color there was a bed you could sleep in unthreatened a room with a view you were more used to glancing at each day and one day i noticed i was curious about all possessions that must still be at that address i wanted to see them touch remember after my first visit in vain to Mrs. Dorling's house, I decided to try a second time. Now, a girl of, of about 15 opened the door to me. I asked her if her mother was at home. So, uh, as things uh, were getting normal in the narrator's life, one day she got curious about all the things that were still at that address. She wanted to see them and touch them. After the first hopeless visit, she decided to try one more time. When she reached Mrs. Dorling's house, a girl of 15 years opened the door. The uh, protagonist asked her about her mother, whether she is, it, she is at home. She said, no, my mother is doing an errand. Errand means short journey made to deliver or collect something. So she told her mother that she was outside doing some errands to which the girl, the narrator, she decided that she would wait for her. I followed the girl along the passage. An old-fashioned iron hanukkah candle holder hung next to a mirror. We never used it because it was much more cumbersome than a single candlestick. So when narrator followed the girl along the passage, there was a Hanukkah candle holder hung next to a mirror. Narrator remembered that she never used it as it was unmanageable. Won't you sit down? asked the girl. She held open the door of the living room and I went inside past her. I stopped, horrified. I was in a room I knew and did not know. So the girl of uh, Mrs. Dolling, she asked narrator to sit down as she opened the door for the living room. Narrator stopped and she was disturbed. 
she was standing in a room which she knew and she didn't this line is very important i was in a room i knew and did not know why she says that i was in a room i knew because the things that were there that belonged to her and did not know because she had visited mrs darling's house for the first time so she tells us that i found myself in the midst of things i did want to see again but which oppressed me in the strange atmosphere so she was standing in the middle of the things which she did want to see uh, because they belonged to her mother but which oppressed me in the strange atmosphere which uh, distressed her or because of the tasteless way everything was arranged because of the ugly furniture or the muggy smell that hung there i don't know mean she felt distressed she was oppressed in the strange atmosphere she is giving us few uh, reasons maybe one of them was the cause of her distress she says that maybe because the things were arranged in a tasteless way or the furniture was ugly or the muggy smell or the humid smell that was there in the room she uh, doesn't know what is the reason but she says that i scarcely dared to look around me scarcely means hardly she hardly dared to look around her the girl moved a chair i sat down and stared at the woolen table cloth i rubbed it my fingers grew warm from rubbing i followed the lines of the pattern somewhere on the edge there should be a burn mark that had never been repaired my mother will be back soon said the girl i have already made tea for her will you have a cup thank you so as i uh, as we read that the girl she was standing in the middle of things which she did want to see but uh, now uh, she was feeling oppressed because of the way things were arranged or the humid smell in the room or the ugly furniture she was scared to look at everything there she sat down on a chair which the girl pulled out for her she looked at the woolen table cloth rubbed it and her fingers felt warm she also followed the lines of the pattern remembered a burn mark that was never repaired girl told her that her mother would be back soon and asked if she would like to have a cup of tea she answered thank you i looked up the girl put cups ready on the tea table she had a broad bag just like her mother she poured tea from a white pot all it had was a gold border on the lid i remembered she opened a box and took some spoons out another thing that was belonged to her it was a tea pot which had gold border on the lid and our narrator she remembered it she saw that the girl she had put two cups of tea in front of her she had a broad bag just like her mother she poured tea from tea pot and it had a gold border on the lid then she opened a box and took some spoons out of it another thing that belonged to the narrator the girl complimented uh, that mrs darling's daughter about the box she felt weird it was uh, she said you know, that's a nice box i heard my own voice so <clears throat> she, it was fear, uh, weird it was strange hearing her own voice it was sounding different to her as though each sound was different in this room oh you know about them she had turned around and brought me my tea she laughed the mother says it is empty we have got lots more she pointed around the room see for yourself i had no need to follow her hand i knew which thing she meant i just looked at the still life on the tea table as a child i had always fancied the apple on the pewter plate so when a girl she turned to give a narrator a cup of tea she asked her if she knew about the box then she added that it is antique according to her mother mrs darling 
she pointed around the room and said that there are more she told her to see although the narrator didn't need to follow her direction she knew what she was talking about she looked over the tea table and remembered how she used to fancy the apple on the pewter plate the girl uh, shared that uh, we used it for everything she said once we even ate of the plates hanging there on the wall i wanted uh, to so much but i wasn't anything special i had found the burn mark on the tablecloth the girl looked questioningly at me so the girl she also shared with the narrator that they had used the plate for everything uh, once they even ate of the plates that were hanging on the wall the girl she wanted to eat of that plate too but it wasn't anything special the narrator found the burn mark on the tablecloth the girl looked at her in a question yes i said you get so used to touching all these lovely things in the house you hardly look at them any more you only notice when something is missing because it has to be repaired or because you have lent it for example now the narrator said yes uh, and told her that when you are so used to touching things into your house you hardly notice anything you only notice when something is missing or it needs to be repaired or because you have lent it again i heard the unnatural sound of my voice again i heard the unnatural sound of my voice and i went on i remember my mother once asked me if i would help her polish the silver it was a very long time ago and i was probably bored that day or perhaps i had to stay at home because i was ill as she had never asked me before i asked with her which silver she meant and she replied surprised that it was the spoons forks and knives of course and that was the strange thing i didn't know the cutlery we ate of every day was silver so uh writer who over here she says that she found her voice to be unnatural and continuing she told the girl that once her mother asked her if she would help her polish the silver it was long time ago and she was bored that day she had to stay that day uh, maybe as she was ill uh, she asked her mother what silver she is talking about then her mother told her that it was the spoons knives and forks but narrator did not know that it was silver so, uh, hearing this the girl laughed again i bet you don't know it is either i looked intently at her what we eat with she asked well do you know she hesitated she walked to the sideboard and wanted to open a drawer i look it's in here so uh, when uh, narrator's mother said that all the cutlery they used in their everyday life it was of silver so narrator told that girl even she doesn't know that the cutlery they were using it was of silver girl she laughed and said that she bet she didn't know it was either with what they ate with now the narrator asked if she knew the girl hesitated and walked to the sideboard and opened a door she said she would see if it was there i jumped up i was forgetting the time i must catch my train she had her hands on the drawer don't you want to wait for my mother so narrator she jumped up and said she forgot the time as she had to catch the train so mrs darling's daughter asked her if she did not want to wait for her mother no i must go i walked to the door the girl pulled the drawer open i can find my own way so the narrator she replied with a no and said she must live leave the girl she pulled the drawer open narrator said that she could find her way out and walk down the passage as she heard the ringing of spoons and forks 
so when she said that i can find my own way and as i walked down the passage i heard the jingling of spoons and forks jingling of spoons and forks was heard what is jingling jingling means the tinkling sound so she heard the tinkling sounds of the spoons and the forks while she was walking down the passage at the corner of the road i looked up at the name plate marconi street it said i it said i had been at number 46 the address was correct so when narrator she reached the corner of the road she looked at the name plate again and it said marconi street and she was standing at 46 the address was correct but now i didn't want to remember it any more she dis- didn't want to remember this address any more i wouldn't go back there because the objects that are linked objects that are linked that are connected in your memory with the familiar life of former times familiar life of former means who is uh, that familiar person of course it's narrator's mother who uh, whom she has lost years ago so the all the things they were connected to the mother and uh, she says that uh, the things that are connect uh, in your memory with uh, connected with the familiar life of former times they instantly lose their value when severed severed means cut off from them you see them again in strange surrounding so here uh, she says that uh, she didn't want to go back uh, as the things in there reminded her of memories linked with mother or the familiar life of old times and also say that they lose the value when you are separated from them and you see them again in strange environment and what should i have done with them in a small rented room where the shreds of black paper blackout paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of cutlery fitted in the narrow table drawer further she says that uh, what she would do uh, with all these things in a rent, small rented room where even the blackout paper it is still hung over the window and no cutlery uh, or just a handful of cutlery is fitted in the narrow drawer i resolved to forget the address of all the things i had to forget that would be the easiest and she finally resolved on forgetting the address as she found to be the easiest so on realizing that her effort to revive links with her past would affect her present adversely she makes her mind to give up this desire also with a sense of resignation she decides to bear this tragic after effect of the war and she had borne it uh, other horrors also so uh, she finally decides to move on in life and uh, forget the past the past that was linked to her mother and mother was no more so the things that were associated with her mother definitely going to uh, arouse those memories uh, which she uh, shared or which she had when she was with her mother and that would be painful to her so the best way is to move on in life and forget the past and in the past what she remembered she remembered the address so that is why she says in the end that she decided to forget it because it was the easiest way to forget the past and move on in life now coming to the question answers let us discuss them briefly have you come back said the woman i thought that no one had come back does this statement give some clue about the story if yes what is it so here this quoted statement it gives us a clue about the story it means that the two families they were acquaintances who knew each other and stayed nearby and during the war many families left the land to take refuge in another place while some of the families stayed back at the same place mrs dorling thought 
that the family of Mrs. S died during the war and that is why she gave such a cold reaction to the girl who came to visit her. The story is divided into pre-war and post-war time. What hardships do you think the girl underwent during these times? So as we have read that the story it is based on the pre-war and post-war period and the family of the girl was rich before the war and they had valuable possessions in their house. When the war started, Mrs. Dorling, she established contact with them and started visiting them and took all their possessions with her whenever she would visit as she believed if they would leave the place, such things should not be wasted. The narrator, she suffered a lot. Her mother died and she had to live in a rented place. She found it really difficult to go back to the place where her childhood was spent and she wanted her belongings back. But when she went to meet Mrs. Dorling, she noticed how the things were arranged in a tasteless manner and she could no longer connect to them as she lost her interest in them and partly she was afraid. So finally, she decided to leave the house and forget the address. Next, why did the narrator of the story want to forget the address? Uh, as we have read that her uh, neighbor, Mrs. Dorling, she kept the valuable items in her house until the war was over and she didn't want to lose them during the war in case they decided to leave the place. Narrator's mother gave her the address of Mrs. Dorling, 46 Marconi Street. Uh, a narrator, she remembered the address and decided to visit her anyway. She was afraid to visit the place again as it brought back many past memories. But and also when she saw all the possessions that were they were arranged in a tasteless manner and she lost interest in them. She could not connect with the things and the thought that she would not stay at the house any longer. She would destroy the good memory she had with those items. So she decided to forget the address and not to go back to that place. Number four, the address is a story of human predicament that follows war. Of course, war always brings a lot of suffering to human beings. It brings them both uh, destruction and death. This chapter address, it is also based on the same thing. During wars, all the belongings were taken by Mrs. Dorling who promised to keep them safe. Mother of narrator died and all the possessions were left with, the, left with Mrs. Dorling. Years later, when narrator decided to visit the house whose address was given to her by her mother years ago, Mrs. Dorling showed no sympathy to girl and took the time to even recognize her. She thought everyone in her family had died. Narrator wanted to take back her belongings, uh, but Mrs. Dorling, she did not allow the girl to enter the house. And it seemed like a woman who didn't have any human emotions. Mrs. Dorling, she appeared uh, having no human emotions. And so the war leaves the world desolated and it cannot be healed. So with this, we come to an end of this chapter. I hope you understood it. If you face any problem, ask me in the group. Thank you.